I'm Jeanette Martin Horn, and I am born and raised right here in uh, Wayne County, North Carolina. I grew up on a farm here, which is called uh, the Martin Farm. There's two farms, actually. There's one on, this is called the, kind of the Grantham area, and the second farm is over on Highway 55. Um, Hi, and I'm Joyce Martin Bowden, and I grew up on this farm, um, and for some period of time, I moved away and lived in Philadelphia, but I grew up farming as a child, and I've recently moved back and have been farming full-time for the last four years. Awesome. Thank you guys for doing this interview today, and I want to know what some of the history of the land is here. Okay. Well, the history of this land, this is a century farm. This farm has been here since... Uh, 1883, our great-great-granddaddy, we are sixth generation back, uh, purchased this land after slavery ended. He served in the uh, Union, Army. Union Army as a Union soldier. He was in that for about a year, and then when he got out, he come back to the exact same land that he had actually worked on as a slave. Him and the person that he worked with, they was friends before, but they was actually owners of the land. They was no longer... After slavery ended, they said they could not continue farming, so they just up and started leaving, and they kind of sold the land, and he bought bits and pieces of it until he acquired what he had at his death. Uh, so, uh, again, this is a century farm. This farm will celebrate 140 years come 2023. That's how old this farm is. We have a, a certificate, a plaque. Uh, I can get that for you later. You can see that. So, uh, and it started out, he was doing... Uh, Cotton and uh, tobacco was the main crop then. The farm has evolved from that point in time till now is we grow, we've got, it's a very diversified farm at this point. We are everything from produce to row crops to livestock. So, uh, and it's a pretty big farm. I mean, uh, we own one section of it, but it, in, uh, it entails a whole family. We have always been a very family oriented uh, folks. I mean the whole my from what I can remember the stories about my granddaddy I mean his uh, sister and him they reunited after the slavery because they were separated. They originated out in Sampson County but when the war ended this uh, sister came to Wayne County and found her brother and so we've always maintained kept the families together from that point to now. Absolutely. And talking about family, what was your daily life like as a child here on the farm? Oh, my daily life as a child, uh, to me, it was probably a fun life, although most people think, oh, that's the worst thing I could have possibly done has been a uh, farmer's daughter. But uh, to me, I guess being that my folks owned the farm, I didn't quite see it like other sort of. Uh, it was hard work. It was hard work, but it was, but, but it was fun because, as I said, we did everything as a, a family oriented. My brother, I mean, my daddy had three brothers right here, and all the children. We all uh, interacted. We did everything together. I mean, if we was picking beans, or if we was uh, doing tobacco, or if we was chopping, all three families we rotated. And with what we done, or what the families done, if we when it came to buying equipment and stuff like the tractor and stuff back when we were young. They would make sure this one has what they need this year. We'd all work together and get that. And then the next year, we'd rotate to the next one. Then the next year, until at, at some point in time, everybody had what they needed. And we all continued to work together. And that's how the farm made a profit. That's how they, they was able to sustain the farm. And as a child, I did a lot of hard work, but I did a lot of fun things. Uh, you, you know, I mean, we'd get up, taking out that tobacco and everything early in the morning, but at the end of the day, we still had time to get out there and play jump rope and hopscotch or whatever, just like any other child. So uh, we had plenty, although we didn't know we had everything we needed, but it was because everything was grown on the farm, everything we eat. The farm was able to sustain us. I mean, 100%, you might as well say. We only purchased the only thing I remember my dad ever giving my mama money to go to the store to get was washing powder and... Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> right, cleaning items and that type of stuff, bathroom stuff. But for as food, I mean, we raised hogs, cows, chickens, ducks. Then I had folks that hunted. I had folks that fished. So uh, it was the perfect life, uh, although at that time I didn't know it, but it was perfect. I know it now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And 
And was that a similar experience for you, you would say? It was. We all uh, had the experience of working cooperatively. I think it's one of the reasons that we learned teamwork so well is it was the example that our parents and our uncles uh, taught us because they worked together at times when they couldn't uh, have access to loans or capital to buy farm equipment and we got in the habit of pooling our resources so that everybody could survive and so that was an example that I took with me all of my life. I've always yeah. been able to work as part of a team because of that example and as far as um, just actual childhood things it didn't really feel as though we were doing anything different than other children right. we worked but we played and all of the kids around here kind of had similar experiences uh, we know that everybody else worked hard in tobacco the same as we did and we know that some other uh, family members uh, grew cucumbers for the market and grew peppers and tomatoes that were sold at the market in Faison. So it was an experience that seemed average to us, but right. it was a lot of work and a lot of fun. Absolutely. And what did you hope to become as an adult when you were a child working on the farm? What was your dream as someone? I know you mentioned in the documentary you showed me that um, it was your goal to get out of the farm. And it, um, So what was that goal originally? Well, Mostly everybody told us that we needed to have a college education right. and that we needed to find a job that we could make money. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we did that. We, we both have degrees. I have a master's degree. And, uh, you know, as a social worker in Philadelphia, it was a very rewarding career. You know, I liked doing child welfare. I liked helping children because I love children. But uh, if, when I was ready to retire... My first thought was, you know, move back to North Carolina and farm. So that's kind of what we, what I've done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, now myself, I never moved out of North Carolina. Uh, I graduated at, uh, well, I first went to Wayne Community, then I have a business administration degree, and then I went later on. I went back and I uh, completed my degree in criminal justice, and I was uh, with the criminal justice system. That's what I retired with, and uh, both our jobs kind of interacted or uh, really come right back to what we learned farming because both jobs required teamwork. It required the same kind of uh, ability to think and make decisions concerning somebody else. It wasn't just about us. It is, uh, I think that's the one thing that you learn on a farm is the key to your future life or what you do in life is going to always revolve or should revolve around teamwork. Everything in life really needs to be people working together to, for a common goal. So, uh, as Joyce said, everything she just said, I agree with 100% and I feel pretty much the same way uh, along that line. Absolutely. And what is the importance of agriculture to you and your family? Obviously, the land's been here for many, many years. You guys are a century farm. So how has that impact of that generation, uh, be being generations of farmers, how does that continue to impact you, and why do you keep farming? Well, I keep farming. Uh, I love the land because being a part of the land and being a part of something that was established somebody else worked really hard and struggled for us to have, I think it's important that each generation be aware of that and continue to pass down or have the opportunity if they so desire, just like we do, if they make it they desire to uh, farm, that we have maintained the farm, the land is here for them to make the same choices. It's not about me at this point in time, but the same way I believe that my great granddaddy, he had in mind that he was doing something for generations and generations to come. So that's why I'm in with things now. I'm doing what I'm doing because it's because you know the scripture says we ought to be uh, working for the third generation. So I'm not just working for the grandchildren and who are around here. I'm working for them them to come. So that's the importance for me is that it's a I, I know it's a part of me and if the rest of them feel or won't have that desire, the opportunity is here for them. And I I think it's important for us to keep farming at this point because. It gives us an opportunity to engage the next generation of this family, and it gives us an opportunity to teach the next generation of this family how to grow the produce safely and how to uh, manage it and how to run a business. 
those are examples that I consciously want to set for the next generation of this family. And that's the reason that we keep doing it is because we love doing it. <laughs> and also, I think that raising fresh produce is a service to the community. We have lots of people who come and say, oh, those peas were really great. or, And it just makes you feel good that what you're growing, people actually enjoy and get health benefits from. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, what is your typical harvest like? What is it growing here on the farm? And um, what have you guys been doing for the past few years? Well, this is our fourth year as uh, produce farmers. Me and Joyce kind of just took uh, a portion of this, maybe about 20 acres, I guess, that we just pulled out from, you know, because my brother them maintained the other two, 300 acres out here. But we just doing a small amount of it uh, doing as produce. And we had started out with, I think the first year, what did we start out with? Uh, we did nursery seedlings, right. and we did lots of leafy greens, and we did lots of okra the first year, and we've always done watermelon. Uh-huh, that's a but biggie. recently we've expanded uh, how many peas we do. We've added butter beans, we've added string beans, and yeah. garden peas, and all kinds of uh, seasonal produce. We try to grow whatever is in season in this local area so that when people are looking for a certain thing, they know what season to come and look for. It's almost fall, so right now we're getting stuff planted that would be fall produce. We're wow. planting uh, sharphead cabbage and we're planting fall collard greens and mm -hmm. we, we're waiting for our butternut squash to get finished. We're waiting for our pumpkins to finish. So the stuff that's for fall is what you would expect now because we grow seasonal. Right, as when she says seasonal, we also have two high tones that we have. Uh, we started out with, well, the first year we didn't actually have a high tone. We did everything just basically on the land. But now we have two high tones. One is right behind uh, this little hedgerow right here, and the other one is on the, where you leave this farm and go right on through the woods to the other farm. So we are not only doing seasonal produce, but we're also doing non-seasonal because we can practically grow uh, produce now year-round with the, having the high tone. So we've kind of just jumped in with both feet as being produce uh, operators. I mean, we, we've really got ourselves established with that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, obviously, like you said, this farm has been around a long time, and uh, with, with time, struggles happen, uh, things that make farming hard happen. So what have been some of those struggles while you've been farming, and how have you guys overcome it? Okay, well now, the struggles hadn't been probably as deep for me and Joyce as they probably have for my brother, because when he graduated high school, he took over farming this entire farm. I mean... Uh, there's a lot of, just like the brother that's here now, he works a public job. I have another brother, he works a public job. A lot of the cousins, they went to school, and they didn't chose to come back and just farm, which he did. Uh, and as Joyce mentioned before, uh, being that he's been the only one farming, he didn't quite have the family support, so he had to kind of branch out and do a lot of stuff on his own. And that was definitely a struggle for him, you know, running uh, into getting the loans or the money that others might get a little easier but he has struggled it's been part of 40 years but he managed to maintain it's been hard but uh he's maintained now me and joyce our biggest struggle i guess was just being able being that we are already senior citizens is, is physically getting out here doing the work because a lot of things that we come back into farming to do you know the equipment was already here uh now we had to do make a real strong effort to get assistance to get up the high tones so we went through our local Wayne County Extension Agency and we went through other state agencies to get help with that uh, and there is some struggle it's just, it's just a struggle just doing all the paperwork because the, the state and uh, different agencies require a lot of paperwork there's a lot you know and that that gets a little but I guess having the educational background that both me and Joyce had that hadn't been that bad and then another major issue in growing produce, especially we've evolved. We started out small, and right now I feel like we are probably about to be at our max because I don't want to get any bigger. But And the reason I say that is because you, it's not able to get the label. You cannot get the help, you know, hire help. Uh, that is one of the biggest struggles 
for produce farmers or for farmers in general at this point in time is getting getting labor because with farming even though we got all this new equipment all this big equipment there's a lot of things is going to require hands-on labor especially produce uh, you can't now with soybeans and corn yeah they go out there they got a big combine and that gathers that but if I'm going to get peas this is a hand job if I'm going to get uh, butter, beans. butter beans or if I'm going to dig uh, p potatoes you know these things this this is a hands on so that is uh, one of the main struggles is the labor and then the cost of labor and then in this past year we've had the uh, additional struggle with the weather. the weather and that's against and you a lot of time climate change uh, it's hard to know when to plant because we didn't expect this drought that we've had and because of that it's something that you usually plant at a certain time you couldn't plant because it was too dry and so everything this season was very late so getting used to how the climate change affects when you can plant is hard. We have to study the science and read up on it in order to know when we need to plant so that it comes off at the right time. That's a struggle. And uh, this year has been more of a struggle than usual because of how long the drought lasted. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's very true. And then I'd say probably the, the other struggles are uh, it's little things. It's not that big you know in uh dealing with equipment uh breakdown and that type of thing we run into that out uh, i can say one thing uh cost of fertilizer yeah diesel fuel the, right uh, uh, those those have been things and then we ran into the pandemic you know the past two years we had that to deal with because there was a lot of restrictions uh, in handling food and different things at the farmers market we both uh I'm at a farmer's market out in Mount Olive. Now she's at the farmer's market in Goldsboro, Wayne County. So uh, we, we had all those things to contend with. So, But we have still survived, so we, you know, we're still, still going on. Absolutely. And since you started farming, how has your farm evolved into what it is, what it is now? And um, I know you talked a little bit about that, but if you can uh, further elaborate. Well, I guess what we've started is just a division of this farm. We're the produce division, and right. we, we've evolved from just having a little bit of produce that first year and a few nursery seedlings to having a, a full line of all of the different uh, fruits and vegetables. We, we have stra uh, strawberries, we have tomatoes, we have stuff that come off in each season, and now we've added um, canned tomatoes, we've added salsa, we've added jelly, so we've added um, uh, a, a line of, of a variety that we didn't have, and each year we add something new. This is our first year doing the salsa, this is our first year having the watermelon uh, jelly, but we keep adding new things to what we offer every year. And a lot of it is based on what clients tell us, what customers tell us they want. You know, the customers told us that we hadn't planted enough peas, so we planted more and more peas every year. And, um, and we're just grateful that we have the customers who come back to us year after year because they like what we are doing. Right. And it makes you more competitive, I think, because you guys have so much that people don't have to go to a bunch of different <laughs> stands. Well, th that's true. And then... That, that's very true. And then also, uh, we if you look at us, we are senior citizens. And most of the people that are doing produce are senior citizens. And that is the one thing that I'm hoping people will look at and be able to look at us and say, okay, if they can do that, because we really need more people in the produce. I mean, you know, uh, we don't have that much competition, but com it's not all about competition. It's about making sure people get the food or the, the get have access to the types of food and produce that they want because once everybody all these the little small farmers like us or minority or whatever no longer exists there's a, a culture of food and stuff that a lot of people are used to is just not going to be available so i i believe i feel like i i'm hoping i'm an encouragement to somebody else to say okay let's give this a shot let's try to keep this going because you know, the especially the younger people, because you know you hear people say all the time. I mean, uh, you 
You can do without a lawyer, a teacher, a banker, or whatever, but you cannot do without a farmer. So somebody's going to need to continue to grow produce or have a desire to grow produce so the whole world can continue to eat. Absolutely. So what is your hope for the future of your farm at 5, 10, and 100 years from now? Oh, Lord, that's a good one. <laughs> well, I think we, we want to continue for this family to own this land and to farm this land successfully. We want to continue to open new markets so that the next generation will be able to make a living from this land. And we especially want to uh, provide healthy food to our community and to the people who are our customers. Um, we want to mentor younger farmers and encourage other people to try farming because we believe it's a good occupation mm -hmm. and just we want to engage and teach whoever wants to learn about farming right yes we do have one mentor on the farm at this time that we are doing exactly what she says this training he's designed to start his own farming business so he's uh you know agreed to come on with us and learn all he can and farming is evolved. It is no longer just the, when they say farming, you just think about the hard work and the labor. Farming is much, much more in depth at this point in time. I mean, you've got all the technical aspects of, of the farming now, just like any other job. You've got the, the business side, the marketing, the media, the packaging. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so much more to farming now than what it was 30, 40 years ago, uh, even myself, we were having to take classes about uh, healthy means of handling food, safety issues, packaging, or uh, you have to take classes on pesticides. You need to know all of these things. Uh, and for the future farming, farming, you know, as a matter of fact, the mentor just told me yesterday that they are looking at having robots now trained to go in the field and actually pick a bean or, or watermelon you know so that means we're going to have to become more educated in uh, agriculture we're going to need more technical skills uh, it, it's no longer just going to be just plant and just go in the field and get it it's, it's, this is going to be a real business 10 years, 20 years, 100 years it, uh, we probably won't even recognize farming in another 20 years as to what it is right now that's how much it's going to change. I can see those changes coming even in the last four years that, that we have been doing this. I've seen major changes. Absolutely. And our last question for today is going to be, if you could give advice to anyone planning to start farming, what advice would you give them? I would say educate yourself. Uh, farming is just like any other career. You need to get as much knowledge as you can uh, besides it, the hands-on experience, yeah, that's good, but you still need to know as much of the business side of farming as you possibly can. You you need to know as much as you can about the knowledge of the food that you grow. You need to know uh, education is the key. Uh, to, for me, I say, I, I, just like the mentor, I'm telling him, you need every class that you can take. Uh, you need to go to every farm site uh, where they're doing the testing. You need to go to every college that they're giving these uh, conferences on. Go to on-site conferences. Education is going to be the key for future farming. It, it's, it's really, that's going to be the, because farming now is not, as I said, it's not just growing the beans or whatever we got livestock on the farms now you've got poultry on the farms you've got the beef you've got everything and every one of those will require more technical skills uh more uh computer knowledge more electrical you're gonna have to know, have a roundabout knowledge of every aspect of any other business you will need for farming the same way 